to my tribe. The Water Shapers were keepers of the past, our connection to the ancestors. How the guild heaped praise on Ngati's Chosen. How they congratulated themselves for acquiring me, I say. My cage was a gilded one. Their dragon, he was not so lucky. The guild teaches a likeness of Ngati's art, for shame. But they posture before outsiders like masters of old. To inspire the world with Ngati's gift. This is my calling. None of this changes how I feel when I practice the forms. Like swimming over an ocean trench, I say. But Pariki twisted my art into a perversion, an echo of what it should be. The guild must change for the Hawana to grow. I say that as Ngati's message delivered through her son's mouth. I will bring a change not seen since the days of our ancestors. Our legends speak of the covenant with Ngati, one that defined the tribes for generations. The ancestors gave her unwavering devotion, and she gave them a gift. Losing Ukaizo severed our connection to the gods. Over time, their gifts diminished. The tribes have never needed Ukaizo more. With Ngati's blessing, I would bring Ukaizo to them. An island, a city, a dream. The best of our people, before Cataclysm buried it under ash and waves. Others call it the heart of the Hawana Empire, and more still call it home. And the bleached bones of the past? Lewd sculptures? No one knows what the Huana left behind, and there is little enough for us to guess by. Nakara, talent like mine was once effortless, I say. Our birthright is Huana. Our ancestors could raise islands or divide the seas. No warship could stand against us. Now only a fraction of us remember. I say it is obvious now that Ngati brought me into the world to do this for the Huana. Whatever we find, what better crew than friends to find lost Ukaizo on treacherous seas, Nakara? I'm glad we got him excited. Makes me wish I knew how to sail. Sounds fun, Nakara. Right, Ishii? Did you hear that? We're friends, him and I. Captain, you have let the handsome fish do all the talking. I needed this. Thank you. Ikara, let us be off. My handsome fish is intimidated by his own potential. How upsetting for him. See the anxiety that takes shelter behind his confident smile? He has worn that since he was old enough to swim. I could always plant the Covenant in his dreams, but that would spoil the fun of Ukaizo. My final test for the Juana. Help him to rise up from crawling. Help him to stand and walk as a man. As a god. Still with us, Captain? I had no desire to bore you with my inane chatter. before venturing forth. Already on it. All right, but I'm keeping what's in there. Hey, Corsi. You have business here? You are in luck. 
The governor is between meetings. Go on in. The Watcher. From the palace, yes? You made quite the impression on the Cantonese. He went on for ages. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. I am Lueva Alvari, governor in residence of the Valiant Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? They speak the truth. A watcher is welcome in these times. Under different circumstances, I'd write up papers for an emissary's posting, no? But we have a situation that needs immediate attention. How much do you know about the luminous Adra trade? Yes, they warned me you had some interesting notions. Let's just say he isn't alone, then. Every viable deposit is of interest to us. Cartographers, surveyors, at any moment we have a dozen expeditions underway. Some weeks ago, we received word of a large quantity of luminous Adra on a distant island. Pukukohara. It is not charted on any of our maps. However, Pukukohara is said to neighbor the island of Tikawara, and we've already made contact with the natives there. We dispatched an expedition to Tikawara with instructions to locate the Adra site and determine its value. Our people have neither returned nor sent any word on their progress. We are too long delayed, and someone must finish the job. A watcher can determine if there is essence in the Adra, if it is worth the trouble and investment to remove it. Information for which we are willing to pay. Yes, I take your meaning. Here, a taste of what's to come. This will be of some use to you, I think. It entitles you to act as a commissioned agent of the Valiant Trading Company. Present it and you will be recognized as such. Until then, I believe we are finished. Return here once you have word of our agents and our prize. Oh, and take care upon the open sea. There are greater hazards in these waters than a few pirates. Plenty of fish in the sea, and plenty in... You'll find no fresher. Everything the daring, of course.
Business comes and goes. Oh, cut. You crack the spine of the old book, revealing blackened pages of dense, illegible text. The words recede into the shadows the longer you focus on them. Suddenly, the page widens to eclipse the world around you. A dark void stretches out on all sides. The air full of choking fumes that carry dying embers and curling flakes of ash. Something stirs in the darkness. An old woman steps forward, leering down at you from on high. Her smile is toothy and cruel. Her cheeks warp around it like melted candle wax. I'm so glad that my messenger tracked you down. These days it's impossible to find good help. Watcher? Before you draw your weapon, know that these proceedings are under a banner of peace. If this was a trap, it would have already closed around you. While Barath whispers in one ear and Aetha shouts in the other, I thought you could use a more seasoned perspective to drown out the noise. Don't you find it unusual? Open and accessible, my siblings have made themselves. After millennia of subdued whispers, now they practically scream their intentions. And isn't it strange how we never bicker unless a mortal is watching? If we still possessed our glorious titans, my siblings and I would have put an end to Aethys and his rampage by now. While we are powerless to stop him, some of my kin wish to observe how mortals respond to this threat. They think it will shine a light on the value of our patronage. Have we raised you well enough to be self-sufficient, or must we return to Aora? and impose some corrective measures. What indeed? That would depend on which of us you ask. A cross-section of society has converged on the dead fire. Some of my kin are of an opinion that we are meant to judge mortals on the basis of their performance, while the rest of us have already made up our minds on the matter. Judge for yourself, but I think you'll find my intentions are more straightforward than you think. When we ascended to godhood, we did so to provide for a savage people. 
Our goal was to craft a society whose values were made to last. Perhaps even a society that had no need of us. A naive fallacy, but one that inspired my optimistic, misguided kin. How you and your allies counter this threat will demonstrate whether you are competent enough to guide your own destinies. Or if we need to revise our strategy. The soft-hearted among us are counting on you to win this existential wager. No doubt, Leotha shares their sympathies. I do not. We exist to rule over mortals. Nothing can change that. So now you know the truth. I assume you have questions. Whether knowingly or unintentionally, you seem to find yourself on the vanguard of change. Mortals like you come but once in a lifetime. Some would react poorly if I stripped mortals of their freedom without giving them a chance to plead their case. You have the honor of standing tall as their advocate. Before I return to Aora and assume my position as your deserving tyrant, you have this opportunity to prove me wrong, to demonstrate whether or not mortals are responsible enough to claim their future. You speak as if you do. Mortals have precious little time to decide for themselves. Will they stand together as one, or swallow their pride and bend the knee? I have every confidence that you will disappoint us. Once my position is upheld, the undecided among the gods will embrace my plan. Prove it or disprove it, yes. I never agreed to this arrangement, but if your example demonstrates mortal ineptitude, as I trust it will, then I can make the plan serve me. An assertive minority of gods believe that your choices will prove the value of their wild optimism. As if mortal collaboration and ingenuity are endorsements of our leadership, then there are those of us who know better, who are not so easily convinced. Kith are vulnerable, unless they submit to the destiny we chart for them. Thinking otherwise can only breed dissent and chaos. It was an ambitious plan, our utopia. Perhaps too ambitious. We ascended to power, responding to a need inadequately satisfied. Assuming these roles gave us the authority to mold Aora over time, to influence you and lay the groundwork for a society yet to come. On the outset of the plan, some believed that mortals would outgrow us, as if that was a favorable outcome. To me, our eternal pantheon was always a critical fixture. Aethus was one of those who supported mortals, while I have always been their most vocal critic. A valid, self-defeating question, and one which I pose often. We assumed that they, whoever they were, would reveal themselves to us. Rational government would rule in our stead, leaving churches vacant. Thanks to Aethus, we're pulling the dough from the oven before it's had a chance to fully rise. You unfortunate bastards never had the chance to prove me wrong. Opposition can take many forms. If a church embraces and weaponizes my doctrine, that is very different from me rampaging as a titan. Aethus is not known for subtlety. Twice now, he has contaminated the purity of our experiment, and done so with extravagant displays that undermine our authority. His approach was sophisticated, indirect. I owe you no explanations on the matter. Besides, you are not worthy to speak his name. I am the counterpoint to the soft-hearted. It makes no difference if mortals pass some arbitrary test. My mind is settled on the matter. Regardless of my feelings, 
The timing of this crisis forces us to accelerate our schedule. Final judgment comes sooner than any of us would prefer. You mean gods crafting a godless world? Not truly. My siblings desired to influence mortals and steer them in a proper direction. Even if that direction led to places we could not follow. I have no intention of being left behind. Society would unravel without its queen to impose strict order. If our pantheon found that mortals had cultivated a perfect, lawful system to maturity, I would not voice a word in protest. I would merely stand aside and await the inevitable collapse. Mortals need us. I know this as well as I know myself. Even a lawful and responsible society would be poised to collapse as long as its architects and strongest adherents were mortal. Any satisfaction that my siblings derived from their little experiment would be short-lived, and it would fall to me to clean up after their mess. Make no mistake, Watcher. In this, I cannot be proven wrong. You have learned much already. Only ask if you are ready for the truth. Nothing you've done has tarnished it utterly beyond repair. You may congratulate yourself on that much, at least. The wheel is our shared responsibility and each of us serves it in our own fashion. I am the axle upon which the gods balance their power. Aethus keeps the wheel in motion. He was our promise to mortals that time and labor would yield a deserving reward on the next turning of the cycle. At the height of our power, we recognized the potential of the soul. We knew that it could be bound or split apart diverted like a river and hammered together. Hammering was trivial. Those of us who agreed with the Apotheosis Project, and many who did not, submitted to a violent and horrible erasure of our individuality. After the dust settled, we adopted the forms of beings from Aeora's most prevalent myths. There were other faiths and legends, but we labored to strike their names from history. Much of reincarnation's mechanism exists in the idea space of the beyond. You wouldn't find a wall of cogs and levers unless we conjured one to illustrate a point. The wheel has but one material component in all of Aeora. Something we built to channel essence through Luminous Adra and into the beyond with reliable continuity. Before we intervened, the flow of essence was directionless. Unpredictable. We succeeded in widening the gap, diverting it, giving it an efficient path to follow. Before we took control of the wheel, reincarnation was error-prone, lacking forward momentum. Hollowborn were fairly common, and hardly the worst of the soul maladies. Control gave us the power to strengthen the souls of intelligent kith over generations. We made you wiser, stronger, more likely to develop the society we thought you deserved. Every turning of the cycle demonstrated the righteousness of my belief. Nature begets chaos, and discipline begets perfection. Speak, Watcher. It isn't every day that I open myself to these communions, so spend your breath wisely. Yes, I think we will. This is not the end of our discussion. You know how to find your way back to this place. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes.